Almighty Father, thank you for what you have done and are doing among us, for us, for your name, for the people. Lord, keep doing so. Open the eyes of many, many more to know your world, to accept your truth and work with you. God, this piece of information I am given to your children. May it keep them. May it perfect their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you hear. The market is a place where you buy commodities. Many things are in the market. It's only you may not know where to find a particular kind of product. If you know what people sell in the market, it will surprise you. But those people who desire the product that they come to the market for, know where to find them. Know the corner where they're selling with them. Now, <laughs> you may not know the corner where they sell drugs. If you come there, you may not even see. But, those who are used to taking drugs, when they go to the market, they know where to find their own people. In fact, even if they are newcomers to that market, they normally know the corner where their own customers are. So, be careful what you hear. This place, a church, a campground, can offer many things to you. It, there is a corner where backbiting class is. And those who are always interested in information know where to go. Whenever they come to the headquarters, to the conference, to the campground, they know the people who are selling with information. They know how to locate them and get fresh information. Be careful what you hear. When you come to the camp and you are this type that loves backbiting tongue, you know where to find them. You know the corner to go to. You know the person to reach at and get your required information. Because you have other people to feed you are coming to buy product. When you go back home, you have customers to feed. They are waiting for you. You have come to the headquarters. Now, you must get the product to go and sell. That which you will share with others. Stories about the pastor. 
Stories about pastor's wife. Stories about pastor's family. Stories about the staff. Stories about this. Stories about that. That is what you want to hear. And that is what interests you. I don't know. What is the latest? You got some? Or oh, the market is dry this time? Now, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I read verse 23 to 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Why do you look sorrowful? It's because of what enters into your heart. Why do you look fearful? It's because of what enters into your heart. Why do you live, look lonely? It's because of what enters into your heart. Why is hatred filling your heart? It's because of the information you have received. You got the information because you went to the corner where you will get it. And that's how it has affected you. You came happily, but you were told a story that showed that you were hated. Do you know what they said about you? And they drop poison in your heart. And when they dropped it, your face changed. You met with your friend, the regular, regular friend. Where the one, that, the one that shares with you informations of life. New one. And the kind of information that you people love. And your heart turned away. You lost your focus. And see how it has affected you. You are going back home empty handed. Because the information you receive deprived you of concentration. The information you got emptied your life, caused leakage in your spirit. All your gains have leaked out. That is why the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 4, verse 24. Mark chapter 4. Verse 24. It says. And he said unto them. Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye met. It shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear. Shall more be given. Don't train yourself on rotten information. Otherwise, your heart will be full of rottenness. Your heart will be filled with rottenness. Don't train yourself on rotten information. Take heed what ye hear. 
Don't develop interest in hearing negative things. Don't be inquiring after negative things. Turn away from a backbiting tongue if you don't want to be hot in your spirit. The weights of a tailbearer are poisonous. Brother, if you want healthy life, avoid bad information. Do you see this place as a place for bad information? Why are you looking for bad information? Do you see this presence of God here as that you can still find something bad to entertain? To entertain your life. That you are interested in something bad, something bad, something bad. What? Okay. What? Okay. Maybe you have come now. Have there? Are there new names of witches and wizards? Tell me. Did they mention some people? Who? Who? Is that what brought you here? Is that what brought you? How will that help your Christian life? How? Will that help your life? No wonder. The people come and go. Come and go. No change. Because they come to carry rottenness. What interests you is not original. What you come to carry is not the word of God. Take heed what you hear. Take heed. Be careful of what you hear because more will be given to you. You will be occupied with it. Backbiters locate themselves. They have signs to know themselves. Again, in the book of Luke chapter 8 verse 18, I'm saying this because you may be going away from this blessed conference with empty hand, empty heart. You may have picked some information and that is what you think suffices you. And that is not what brought you here actually. It has no meaning in your life. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. Take heed therefore how ye hear. The other thing is what you hear. This one is saying, because of the condition of your heart, you interpret things in the way you delight. Things could be said in this way, but you bring it to the way that you will be happy you have got an information. It's like, the one that kicks the ball with the left foot. If the ball comes to the right side, he has to bring it back to the left. Before he can kick it. Your interpretation. Clear words are spoken to you. You are seeing another thing inside it. I know. They think they can hide me. I pick it. In fact, when the pastor was preaching, I pick it. You people don't know how to pick information from what pastor is saying. Uh, me, I know how to pick it. <laughs> I'm telling you. What did you pick, actually? <laughs> what did you pick? You picked damnation. You picked vanity. 
you pick things that will not help you by your own interpretation so that you are now going with the wrong information by your interpretation this one nobody told you you told yourself from the conversations of people from the preachings you were hearing you were looking for something he that seeks shall find you got it you never got the real thing God is given. You got the thing that you were looking for. And there are things that don't edify. Because your mind is not looking for good things. Your mind is not looking for true things whatsoever are true. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You, do, you don't normally obey this law. You can pick things anyhow. Brother, don't do that. Otherwise, you, won't, you will not enjoy training here. We will, not be, we will not be talking against you, but you will see yourself being talked against regularly. We might not be talking about you, but you will see that you are the subject of our talk. I don't know what happened. They want to kill me. They are looking, again, looking for me. It's a lady from Portacourt. She said, when she was in Lagos, they were looking for her. They wanted to kill her then, so she came to Portacourt. But when she came to Portacourt, they, they came, they were talking, I knew. I knew they, they came. They were talking. It's me. They wanted to kill. So she left that place. She went to her sister's house. Then she discovered that after a time, they were planning against me. I picked, I knew. I had the voice. I understood. She left. <laughs> she left that place. She called me one time. I want to come to the camp. I said, you won't come here. <laughs> you will not come here. Otherwise, you will come and say, we want to kill you in this camp. But during the youth conference, she came. I'm telling you. So, I was told that a lady was here. Everybody left, she remained. When, I, when they, uh, they told me a lady remained here, they said they should, I said they should call her. She came to me. Who are you? Hey, I am the sister who calling you now from Bad Potakot. That, uh, in fact, even in this camp, they came yesterday. You see. <laughs> <laughs> are you hearing me? I said, you can't sleep in this camp. I was just patient. I said, we, I gave her 15,000. Go back to Portacourt. She said, no, she's going to her, her relations house in, her, in Abia, in Aba. I said, be very careful. Don't send me texts. I'm telling me they want to kill you in Aba. You hear me? <laughs> Your heart has been contaminated. So all the love we're showing here, you're not seeing it. All the love. Everybody will laugh except you. Because how will you laugh when everybody is against you? How will you? How will you be free when everybody is against you? You look at this person's eye, the eye is against you. You look at this, this man is smiling, say, look at how he drew the mouth. He, he drew the mouth this way. Take it how you hear. Have I delivered your life? Have I broken the yoke in your life? 
to give you freedom enjoy this life that the Lord has given to us freely to enjoy yes take it how you hear Proverbs chapter 4 again verse 23 yes keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life If, you're, if something enters into your heart negatively, trouble has come your way. Your life will not stand again. Your righteousness will not stand again. You have been contaminated. Your thoughts have been affected. Satan has taken over. Be very careful. Out of it are the issues of life. Why would you allow evil to drive your heart? Taking you to where? Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy food from evil. Now, I will tell you. Let us play the main for our people and for our land. Why? What brought the issue? It is the issue of the wrong thoughts. That came. That battle came from wrong thought. That battle came from wrong interpretations. You are battling with people now from wrong thought and wrong interpretation. Look at it in the book of Second Samuel. Chapter 9. Second Samuel chapter 9. From verse 1. And David said, Is there yet? Sorry, chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. And it came to pass. After this, that the king of the children of Ammon died. And Hanun, his son, reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanun, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes, now, see it here. Ammon was ruled by a king. And this king was a friend to David. Remember, Ammon is the son to, to Lot. Descendants of Lord. This king was a friend to David and helped David, an old man, I suppose. When he died, his son took over the throne. He sent some people with gifts to go and bless this man and comfort him. Is that the wrong thing? No. I want to show kindness. I want to do you good. For 
I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thought of peace and not of evil. Thought of good and not of evil. To, to give you an expected end. Then, verse 3. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun, their Lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Had not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy, spy it out and to overthrow it? Can you see it now? Be careful what be careful how what ye hear. Be careful with interpretation. You who feel that you have you have revelation in interpretation. You know how to interpret. Take it. What ye hear. Take it what ye say. Take it what ye think. Now these servants, the servants of Anon went to him and said, you see David send his servants. Are you really thinking that it is because David really loves your father that he has sent his servants to come and comfort you? There is one man. This one man is troubling you. His interpretations are always negative. There is this one woman, this one woman in the camp. You come for meeting. My interpretations are always negative. Are you thinking that David really loves you? That he sent this man to come and really comfort you? Leave that man. He's looking for trouble. Is using this the date of your father as a, as a means of overcoming this, this country. This means that you think have come for comfort. They are, in fact, SSS. They have come to investigate, to search and know the, the riches of this land. They are coming back for war. What? This David, he felt that you are nothing. He thought that it's only your father that is strong in war. He didn't know that you, this, you are young, you are young and powerful. He thinks that because he, your father has died, you are not strong again. He will take over the kingdom from you. Interpretation. Is that not what you are hearing? Is that not what is concerned, brethren? People who have left holiness movement. Is that not what they are telling you? Is that not what they are telling you? When you give them testimony of what is happening here, what do they say? Forget those things. And they begin to tell you lies, to formulate information, even things that are not like that. They begin to go to things you know exist to bring out from it things that don't exist. So when this man had this, if he were here today, he would have helped him because he would have heard that, be careful what you hear. When he had this, eh, so this is what David is thinking. I would tell him I am ready for war. Hey, the thing has gone off. Good has been evil spoken of. Good has been evil considered. So, to show David that he was ready for war. Verse 4. Wherefore, Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments to the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. Go and tell David we're ready. <laughs> We're ready. It is, was a shame to shave off somebody's beard in those days. 
But this one, better they had shaved it off. When you want to grow, they divided the beard into two. <laughs> they shaved one side. I left the other one. They left the other one so that when people see them, they will just be laughing. They will just be laughing. Say, who, who are these human beings? A good thought somebody has coming out of a good intention. Everybody tell me I will never do like that. Why? How do you look at it? It's because you had a thing you did it, you were not careful. You are slow to anger. It's slow to anger. He cut their cloth down at the back and uh, to the buttocks here. Their buttocks became bare. This one is terrible, my brother. This one is not good. <laughs> I'm telling you. Guy, even God will punish this one because it's too much. Ah! Cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks. Make their buttocks bare. And if they don't have clothes, and send them away. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. David must have cried. David must have felt it. How could I have embarrassed you? I didn't think to embarrass you. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. There they will change your clothes, but for your beard, it has to take time. It has to take time for beer to grow. So maybe they waited for another one month. All because of good. Why? You were not careful what you had. And they told me that this man, this is what they are planning. They told me that this is what she said. They told me, I had it, I had it. Be careful what you have had. Who has told you that what you had is correct? Why do you want to take action on what you have had without investigation? So, verse 6, And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zoba. 20,000 footmen, and of King Maka, 1,000 men, and of Ishtop, 12,000 men. That now goes to the war of uh, let us play the people. Let us play the men, as Job said. They, on their own, it came to them that what we have done now, we can't escape the war. Let's, tell, let's gather the people before David takes us by surprise. But David will not come for war. He's not planning for war. But they had gathered. They had hired people. When David had that, he sent Joab out. Actually, Joab and Abishai played the men. So, that is what God is warning you. What should you do when you hear an information? Take it to God. Check out with him. In Exodus chapter 18 
Exodus chapter 18. Verse 19. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel. And God shall be with thee. Yes. Verse 23. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. If I will give you counsel, if God commands you so, if God agrees with it, have you taken those words to God? Have you taken those counsels? Have you gone to God to check up on what you had? Have you gone to God to check up on how you are thinking about the matter? God, this is what I am thinking. This is the interpretation that came to my mind from what this person is saying. Let me tell you, no. That's not the matter. But you didn't take it to God. You just took action straight. And at the end, you become a fool. Will God support you on the wrong course? He will not. You will go and be embarrassed. You will go to fight and become ashamed. God will not support you because you were not diligent. Brother, be careful what you hear. You may leave this movement by what you hear because you conclude it. And this devil can be so terrible. He will give you an information that even to investigate it will be difficult. You will not know how to investigate it. But the voice, the weight of a tail bearer burns going down to your innermost belly like a poison. What will you do now? You have had terrible words. The normal thing is for you to have investigated those things. But you don't even know how to investigate it. Whom will you go to to investigate this thing? What if the person has never had it? You'll be giving him a new information. And they will be taking it from you. And your name will come up. How to do it? That's why. Take it to God. Take it to God. The Bible also tells us. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 21 it says also take no heed unto all words that are spoken lest thou hear thy servant curse thee you who are interested in backbiting you want to hear? Tell me now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Tell. Yes. Uh -huh. You will come and hear the words of curse over your life. It is the glory of the prince to bypass transgression. There are some things that don't bother about them. Uh, do you know what this person said? Don't worry. Calculate it in your heart and know that these words are vain. If, if, if now I will not hold this thing in my heart because I have not proved it. When Saul gave his cloth to David, David said, I can't use them. Why? I have not proved it. So please don't be bothering with hey, this person said this, that person said this. Avoid those things. Pass and go. You will have peace. If you accept it, you're in trouble. 
you must verify otherwise you will sin you must verify otherwise you hold your brother in your heart and it's a sin you hold your sister in the heart and it is a sin then your holiness is destroyed Hebrews chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 13 and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed verse 15 okay 40, verse 14 follow peace with all men and holiness without which no no man shall see the lord looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble at you and what will happen and there, thereby many be defiled by the tongue that is the aim of satan and they are here Yes, is to promote Satan. Pass information. You can be passing it forward. Don't tell anybody that I told you trouble has come. You must be faithful to the tell bearer. Yes, he told you that you should not tell anybody that you <laughs> that is the one that told you. How then will you not tell anybody that she was the one that told you, you are, you are over. <laughs> You'll be swallowing your weight. If I tell him that, he asks me, who told you this? What will I do? My master said, I should not tell anybody that he told me this one. Trouble has come. It's burning in your heart. You will certainly go to another man and say, this thing I want to tell you, don't tell anybody. <laughs> because the person who told me, told me that I should not tell anybody. Is that because I know that you should hear? But don't, don't tell anybody. That's how the thing we just prayed. Even when Jesus said, don't go to the priest, don't tell anybody that I, I healed you. Did he succeed? is it keep your heart pray that God should make you avoid the tell bearer the God make you avoid the tell bearer otherwise you will make your life restless you will defile your Christianity and cause you to defile the Christianity of other people. Yes. The power of the tongue. In the book of Hebrews, I mean the book of James, chapter 3. James, chapter 3. Verse 3. To verse 8 or to verse 9. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. Let me start from verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in words, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter! A little tongue 
Um, a little fire kindled. How great is uh, how great a material must, must be great material substance that a, a little fire kindle can burn down. And it, it puts it how that's what the tongue does. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and it is set on the fire of hell for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tempted and had been tempted of man but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison that's the tongue it's an unruly evil full of deadly poison there are church members. This is their job. They come to you to tell you stories about brothers this and sister this. And it will change your mind towards those individuals. And you, pastor's wives, they will come and be telling you story. That, that is the whole story is to make you backslide. Because by the time they open up the story of what people say about your husband, about what people are saying about your life, you think they are good people. Sometimes God can send people. They pass information to you, you become restless. And you change your mind towards members of the church. Some of those things are not true. And you don't investigate them. You start fighting members of the church. No, I can't use this one. He was criticizing me. He was criticizing my husband. Never! Did you check out? Otherwise, God is angry. God trained that person for years. God gave that person gifts of God to promote his work. You're using your pride as if you are the owner of the church. I will not use her. They, they, they told me the evil she's doing. Did you verify? Did you carry that matter to God in prayer to search out whether the thing be so? Why do you want to defile yourself? Be careful what you hear. Be careful how you hear it. Stories, many, many, many. Told of, of a man of God that lost his ministry because two women were conversing together. The one told his fellow, ah, this pastor is handsome. I believe many women are falling for him. The second person must pass his volleyball. Boom. Then as he's coming, boom. You must pass it to another person. Does the ball remain in one person's hand? So as the ball goes. The other person who, who, who got the ball, the information has changed. Are you aware? Pastor is running after some many women now in the church. Eh? Our pastor, with all that preaching, ah, be there and be talking. The volleyball is going to the third person. Boom! Have you heard what is happening now? Many women are following pastor now. In fact, even pastor has no rest. Okay. Pastor was coming through that hotel. That hotel, I, I saw this thing with my eyes. <laughs> People. <laughs> 
when it reached the, the pastor's wife, he said, what have you been doing? The Bible says we should be praying for our husband. We should be taking care of our husband. You leave your husband. He's now moving from hotel to hotel <laughs> with, with women, members of the church. Eh? My husband and she too. This is a shame. I'm packing. I cannot be here. That's how the matter continued. Be very careful with information. The enemy uses information to destroy you. But handle it well. Take the information to God. Let God help you. Because some information are stronger than you can handle them. Take them to God. Let God help you handle them. Brother, of load the bad information you have already packed into your luggage because tomorrow you are going. Is it not tomorrow you want to travel? What is inside your bag? <laughs> Go and remove it. <laughs> Don't carry it home. You hear? Yes, sir. Women, check your purse. This bag you hang like this. Information is... <laughs> Some terrible information may be there. And you are carrying it to go and uh, spread it over there. Not proved. People are coming with testimonies. You are going with bad news. People are living here with the glory of God. See the testimonies here. But it's yours. You'll be saying, how was the conference? How did it go? <laughs> it's God that will help us. Horemo is going. <laughs> Horemo is going. If it is not prayer, it is not in the next three to five years, nobody will be going to Abuja again. It will have collapsed. Ah, but where did you hear your own? Since everybody is sharing Google testimony, where did you get your own? Oh, you went to that corner? You went to that corner. Go, please, go and empty your back again. And check where it is and remove it. You hear? Yes, Go with good information. Yes, Blessed is he that coming with the gospel of peace. That coming with glad tidings. Go home with glad tidings. Meet your brother with glad tidings. Meet your sister with glad tidings. And not with evil. Rise up upon your feet and thank him. has not happened, you are going to be telling people it happened because you heard from wrong people. Clean your ears. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus name we pray. You can be seated. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
Jesus, I 